Hi, this is Doc Edwards from Mama's Chiropractic. I'm coming to you to talk about One Belly Wednesday. This is my podcast where I discuss our cases that happen in our office. I've written a book called One Belly, Two Brains that will be ready for distribution. And uh, when that is, we'll let everybody know when that's going to launch. So uh, we'll have pre-orders and that kind of thing. But really what this video is for is for newly pregnant patients. Um, it might be their first time being pregnant or it may be subsequent pregnancies who are dealing with some things that they haven't had a problem with in a really long time. So one of the interesting things that I'll find in my office is I had a case came in uh, earlier this week where she was having tailbone pain. You know, when she sat with her um, two-year-old uh, crisscross applesauce down there in her tailbone, it really, really hurt down there with the coccyx is the very, very end part of your tailbone. And she really hadn't had a problem with that after um, several months after the, the, her son was born. Um, and now that she's pregnant again, and she's about, oh, she's about halfway through her second trimester. She's around 23 weeks or so. And she's really starting to feel it again. And it's been going on for, uh, for a couple months, and she doesn't know where it came from. So one of the most interesting things that I'll find is a lot of our old injuries. So let's say you sprained your ankle when you're a cheerleader, or you fell off your bike when you were a kid. Um, maybe it happened during the, the birth process of your first child, and you haven't really noticed it after the, the postpartum healing process. But any of these things, now that you're pregnant again, they seem to have come back. And uh, I see it time and time again with these moms, and nobody has really talked to them about the why. And I always find that interesting because there's a, re there's a hormone inside of your body, it's called relaxin. Now relaxin has a very good, useful purpose inside of your body when it comes to labor and delivery. The whole idea behind that hormone is that it relaxes the ligaments uh, down there in your pelvis to allow your pelvis to spread. That makes a little better nest for baby and should help it make a little bit easier for time for birth. But there's a couple of interesting things about relaxin. One is that it peaks in production around the, the end of your first trimester, so around somewhere between week 12 and 15, and it stays at a nice steady level uh, since that point. But what changes is your body. Your body changes, your, uh, your body grows because you've got a growing baby on the inside. And so that changes weight distribution. It changes the biomechanics of how you walk, how you sit, how you sleep. Um, it even starts changing kind of your own immune system's reactivity. Uh, certain things that didn't bother you before can now start irritating those little neurons and start making them even more aware of things that are uncomfortable inside your body. The immune system can also be in a little bit of this state of uh, over response to, to ligament and tissue damage. And so it might swell up a little bit extra in those areas. And so all of those are really interesting things to me because as a chiropractor, the first thing that I want to do is address how well is the brain and the body communicating. I mean, obviously, there can definitely be a role for a chiropractic in helping to relieve like physical discomfort because of misalignments. But overall, there are the other things that we need to consider, right? The pelvic biomechanics. How is your posture look? How do you uh, stay together when you sit or you sleep? Um, sometimes what ends up happening is that some of these moms, if they go down the track, their pelvis starts to spread and spread and spread. And it feels like they've got this leaning tower of Pisa effect going on where the, the, the vertebrae is like dropping in the pelvis and suddenly they get back pain and spasms. Um, the danger with that from a birth perspective is that the pelvic floor, then those muscles have to do the jobs of the ligaments. And so they tighten. That makes it really tricky for baby to come out. I mean, imagine trying to come out through a nice soft blooming open uh, body versus one that's built like a trampoline, right? And so it's super important for us to be able to catch this kind of stuff and uh, help a mom stabilize that. There's three major ways uh, outside of adjustments that I usually recommend. First is omega-3 fatty acids are the building blocks for those ligaments. So expecting moms should be taking somewhere between 3,000 and 4,000 uh, up to 36 weeks of their pregnancy. I say 36 weeks because generally when it's time for labor, uh, one of the great things about omega-3s, you've heard of like fish oil, right? Uh, liver oil, that kind of thing. That's what I'm talking about. Um, those omega-3s help to make the blood thin, and that's not what you want when you have a placenta leaving your body. So um, also be aware of how much you may have in your prenatal. A lot of prenatals come with DHA and EPA. Those are versions of the omega-3 family. And so if you already have about 750 milligrams, which is pretty common, then put that in your calculation when you're deciding how much you should be taking. You can do the capsules, you can do a liquid. I personally really like Carlson's lemon flavor. Um, so it's up to you about what, what you wanna do. Some moms will put them in the freezer and then just down the hatch and that helps keep them from getting fish burps. 
Um, number two that we do is uh, squats. Now I'm really picky about how moms squat when they have sacral iliac joint hypermobility. Um, one of the ways that I'll have them do it is to make sure they keep very vertical shins as they're lowering themselves down. A lot of people when they squat, their, their knees will go forward from their toes um, and so when that happens, it creates a different loading. It creates loading on the quads, the big strong muscles of the thighs, and doesn't load the hamstrings and the glutes. Those are the muscles I want to wrap together in those sacroiliac joints. So doing those are glute bridges where you're laying on your back and lifting your hips up. Uh, you have your knees bent, feet on the floor, and you raise your hips up so your legs are level in with your torso. Uh, squeezing your bum, that's a, that's a really good activity. And then also sometimes we advise sacroiliac joint belts. So the Sorolo belt is something that we use in our office. Uh, works really well because of the elastic on the backside to help hold the sacroiliac joint together. Um, that way, when the mom is walking around, we always give them some simple instructions. Uh, pretend like you're wearing a miniskirt. You know, make sure that you're not spreading your, your legs to get out of a car. Um, yoga, I would avoid lunge poses at this point in time until this heals up and stabilizes. Um, and then uh, also when we're talking about sitting, you know, you want to sit in a surface that will give you support underneath your tailbone. You want to sit on your sit bones and make sure that the, the cushions that you're on aren't just doing this collapse kind of thing, right? Because if, if you're sitting on a couch or sitting and reading in bed, um, that's going to spread the sacroiliac joints and definitely not help us heal that faster. Uh, in addition to that, there's different ways that you can get adjusted. Um, probably putting big manual forces into a hypermobile joint isn't a good idea. So uh, chiropractors who work with pregnant patients usually have a couple different tricks up our sleeves. We'll use different wedges, or we'll use different life force techniques in order to, to clear those subluxations and interference between how the brain and body are talking. Um, you know, if, if, you know, in this case, uh, I expect a lot of those kinds of things to resolve for her. We found a lot of areas of tension down in her pelvic floor, uh, really mashing with her birth story. She told me that, that her baby had, you know, that stocking cap on the head with a big old crown, which told me that he was in there for that hour and a half as, as her pitocin was working, um, really trying to, to get himself out. She ended up with a second degree tear. On that needs stitches. So it told me that kind of from her history that she had a super tight pelvic floor, which as a nurse makes a lot of sense. And uh, they stand a lot. And so I see that a lot with people who stand a lot for their job. Um, but I think this is going to be pretty straightforward to resolve. We're going to get some stability in her pelvis. We're going to help open up the, some of the fascial restrictions in there. I'll make sure our nerve system is communicating well. And I expect a good result from this case. So if you have any questions uh, about this kind of thing going on, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments. Uh, we do One Belly Wednesdays uh, live every Wednesday uh, on both of our Facebook page, Mama's Chiropractic, and our YouTube channel, Mama's Chiropractic. If you're interested in finding out more information, make sure you subscribe down here, right? And uh, check us out on mamaschiropractic.com if you're interested in becoming a patient.